Nice healthy lunch. A nice healthy lunch indeed. We are living the dream. What's your name? I'm Holly. Holly, nice to meet you, Holly. I'm Ali, this is Gordon. Oh, hi, nice hello, to meet hello, you. Hello, hello. Is this your first time coming to yes. the Union? Yes. I've never been to the Oxford Union before. It's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah. Whoa. Nice. Looks like. Hello, how's it going? It's going well. How's it going with you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Alex. Pretty good. I'm Alex. The, uh, Director of Operations. Ah, here. wonderful. Yeah, nice to meet you. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> this is Gordon. Nice to meet you, Gordon. How are you doing? Oh, is this all being captured for... For the vlog. Oh, brilliant. Yes. Can't, can't wait. Can't yeah, wait that. I like that type of reaction. Can we have everybody react oh, yeah. in that way? Oh, yeah. Are you I'm, I'm Dundee. You, you don't, don't sound, sound like you're from Dundee. Is it this, you're what, this is what everyone says. I think you lose the accent Yeah. Uh, because you just have to try and fit in. As people start making fun of you. Like you've, gone, you've gone down the road of like St Andrews. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> terrible, terrible. Where about in Scotland are you from? Aberdeenshire. Oh, see, I was born in Aberdeen. Uh, but I moved to Dundee, so it was social mobility plan. And, and so I you went down? I know, I went down. Well, just like Dundee. <laughs> and you got teenage pregnancy as well. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, pretty much. <laughs> Hello. Good, yeah. This is how we do it in the better place of Oxford. Oh, of course, so. yeah. You know, yeah. consent form. Wow. You a distinguished visitor. I guess so. I've signed. I've signed the book. You're in. I must be a distinguished visitor. Nice. Sorry, well, I, didn't, I didn't get your guys' names. Uh, Marsha. Marsha, Ali, nice to meet you. And I'm Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. nice to meet Samuel. you. So how do you feel about being on Enemy Grounds? Enemy uh, Grounds, yeah, it's, it's actually a really nice place. <laughs> TBH. <laughs> um, yeah. is, is the Cambridge Union like this as well? Is it like it's, it's, like, it's a proper building, but it's like a lot smaller. Really? Oh, it seems a lot smaller on the inside. Oh, right. And the outside is less like college-y. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you come down much when, when obviously, came or went here? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I visited occasionally, but I never came inside in oh, here. Right. Yeah. It's interesting because we yeah. saw you came to the Cambridge Union as well this term. Oh. Like in the same term. Yes. Or I don't know how, how it works out that they choose their guests. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. In, uh, Just in got an email. I was like, hell yeah. And then got an email from you guys. I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> Like 18, 17, 18 again. Yes. Knowing what you know now. Yes. Would you do a little bit of Yes. Or would you walk away? It was fun. And it's six years, and six years are way better than three years at university. Yeah, fair enough. I would spend the, my free time learning how to be a Web3 developer, though, on the side. Okay. Yeah. I would learn Solidity, learn how to program on the Ethereum blockchain, yeah. build crypto stuff while being a medical student. And then as soon as you graduate, would you slip straight into the, kind of the YouTube territory rather than going? I'd probably also document my journey I was going along. I prob maybe wouldn't do it on YouTube because there's quite a lot of work. It just depends on how much free time I had and how much of a social life I wanted to have and all that kind of stuff. But I would at the, le the very least have a blog or a newsletter or something where I can share my learnings from the world of crypto while being a medical student. A medical degree gives you so many options. You just don't know about them because no one talks about them. Yeah, like you can do any, any of the careers that anyone else in this room is doing. You can become an investment banker, you can go into consulting, you can go into whatever, whatever you want. How did that feel compared to Cambridge? I felt pretty good. I felt pretty similar. Some solid questions, some good vibes afterwards. I feel like I did a lot of thinking out loud on this one. Quite a few questions that were like interesting that I hadn't really talked about before. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. I started writing in this journal on the 14th of May, so it's been two weeks, but I had this one as well, which I 
started seriously writing in the 10th of May. So it's been 20 days of almost daily journaling. It's actually been really solid. Um, yeah, it's been great for, it's almost like a form of personal self-therapy, um, whereby if I'm struggling with something, I could just ask myself a question like, what do I want to do with my life? And then I'll just write what I think the answer is. And then I'll sort of have a little conversation with myself on, on the page. And since starting to do that, like I've actually done come up with a lot of kind of really useful bits for the business and for my life and action points and, and things like that. I've just never really had this sort of level of journaling y stuff before. So now when I'm when I find myself sitting down to do some work, I'll often reach for this journal. A it's a really nice journal and it has the pen built in, so you know, I can just do this thing. But I find myself reaching for that and I'll just start writing. And usually something or other will come up in the writing. And this is kind of this morning pages technique where you just write three pages every morning. Um, it doesn't specify how, what the size of the paper is. So I think I started doing it on like the really big A4, but that became a bit too much. I think this is a really solid size where the idea is, and this is a practice I wanna, I wanna try and continue with. I just write three pages of, by hand. And then at that point, if I wanna continue writing it by hand, I continue, but I'm not, I don't force myself to do so. But I think, yeah, forcing myself to do it three pages every day has actually been really, really handy. And yeah, there's something nice about, something nice and romantic about writing in a journal as well. So good vibes all around. Oh, How good was to see that? You. How was the talk? That was very good. You just ruined my life, haven't you? Oh no, I'm sorry. Um, all right, what are we doing for takeaway? What do you fancy? Um, I am quite What's keen on a, we um, kind of vary it a bit. I, I haven't had a burger in a while. Do you still track the macros? I do. Oh, macros, yeah. you're a macro boy. Nice. If anyone, if anyone in the vlog wants to know what my life is like, we are, it's currently 9 p.m. and uh, Ali wanted to go to the gym before getting a takeaway. Here we are. Alrighty, so we are nearly at the end of the vlog. Let's just do some questions from the previous one. So Hawkin says, how do you speak to a camera and sound natural slash fun? Danny, I'm going to ask you this one. I'm thinking of things like good inflection, excitement about the subject matter, and not sounding monotone. How do you talk to a camera, Danny? Well, I'd, I don't know that I do a good job of this myself, but the things I like in others doing it is I like to hear their real voice, personally. So uh, you might actually disagree with this, but like the if, I, if I'm listening to a podcaster or a creator, I like them to sound like they're talking to their friends because it makes me feel more included in, the, in them and their life. Whereas if I can hear the performance in their voice, um, I don't like that so much. So like, I, I, I don't mind some, some performance, but like if it feels like not them, then it makes me feel distant to them. It, make, it gives me a, a sense of distance between me and them. And I don't like that. Mm. What do you think? I think it kind of depends on the video. I think some videos lend themselves to the speak to the camera as if it's your friend across a coffee table. But I think some videos lend themselves to a bit more of a speak to the camera as if you're delivering a small group workshop to a group of people that are a few years younger than you. And so the way I think of it is like, how would I teach a small group of medical students? It probably wouldn't be in this kind of tone, but it might be in sort of this kind of tone. So I'll kind of ramp up the energy very slightly and be a little bit more dynamic in my movements just to try and kind of be engaging on camera. But if it's like a sit down, speak to the camera from the heart type video, then I'm often much more low key. Yeah, how do you speak to a camera and sound natural or fun? I don't think you, basically it happens by default through practice, but we are in fact working on a course about camera confidence. That'll be linked to the waiting list for that down below. Hey Ali, I wanted to know why did you name your podcast with Tamor as not overthinking? Is there any specific reason for that? Well, the podcast will be returning hopefully next week. Um, we named it not overthinking because I think Tamor came up with the name. He felt that um, the sort of stuff we wanted to talk about, people would think that overthinking, like really deeply analyzing social interactions and that kind of stuff. But it's actually not overthinking because it's like, you know, it's not overthinking. It's just sort of thinking to a reasonable degree about important stuff. And therefore we were like, what if the podcast is called not overthinking in that we are not overthinking because the world would think that we're overthinking, but we are in fact not overthinking. We are thinking the appropriate amount. Hence why not overthinking. How's, how was the name? I think it's good. I remember once there was like an angry review, one star saying, I was looking for an anti-anxiety podcast to help me stop overthinking, and this is not what I found. No, it's not an, not an anti-anxiety podcast, I'm afraid. Okay, final question from Smiley Cam. 
With advertising jobs in your videos, you must get a ton of applications. What is the selection process like? How many stages or interviews will you be doing? I'm not applying, I'm just curious about the hiring process and selection. Well, we follow a methodology recommended by Danny, in fact, called the WHO, the A method for hiring. What it involves is like you apply with an application form type thing. Then we look through the application and if it seems legit, then we'll hop on a quick screening call to kind of do a 20 minute Zoom call kind of vibes to sort of get a feel for what you're about and what you want your career to look like and what experience you have that might help for the role. And then if we think there's a good fit at that point, then we call you in for usually a trial task. Um, so whatever the job is, if it's a video editing, then editing a video. If it's writing, then writing a script. And then based on the results of that trial task, we'll do like a sort of final one or two interviews. And usually that's all done by the team, but then the final interview will be with me, which is just a bit of a vibe check. Because if someone gets to the point where I'm interviewing them, then it's really just to see, you know, do we get on personally? I don't need to try and assess their skills anymore because the team has already done that. So a few different stages of the process, but that's how we whittle down all the applications. Yeah, we've had over a hundred applications for video editor. Like, you know, if I can, if I can be honest, it's like for, for most of the jobs, it is surprising how few good applications we get, <laughs> if, if I'm being honest. Like, honestly, like people say, people feel that applying for jobs and stuff is really competitive. Um, and really hard. It's only really hard if you don't, if you do a bad application. Like there are like more than half the applications just have a very, very, very small amount of effort put in. Uh, so even just a few tips, like just putting more effort into the application really helps with applying for any job. But we have actually filmed a video about how to land your dream job or something like that, where we gave more tips and stuff, which will be out on the main channel very shortly based on all of the thousands of hundreds rather uh, of applications that we've read over the last few years. So you can check that out. But yeah, anyway, that brings us to the end of the, end of the vlog. Thank you very much for the questions. Please do keep them coming in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed this vlog, click here for yesterday's and click here for a little vlog playlist. Thanks so much for watching and have a good night. Bye-bye.